and he lifted lifted up his fist a little bit after I kind of poured my heart out and just kind of touched my chin. And I pretended to go to sleep. I went, that that touched Joe Frazier. That just George Foreman. And I'm like, this is amazing. I just got dropped by Ali. Well, hello and welcome along to another episode of the Switchbox TV Need to Know Acting Show. Joining me for this exclusive interview is a talented actor who has been in Van Helsing and is now in season two of the TNT show Snowpiercer, streaming on Netflix. Welcome along, Mr. Alex Panovich. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Well, I know you're, I know you're busy, so thank you so much for taking the time to come to speak to us. Um, you're currently in Atlanta right now, shooting. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm on, a, on a project till May. I can't really speak about it, um, but I'm really excited in, in, when, uh, when it gets announced. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited about this project, and I'm here till May. I started it in around November, and um, it's a great team, and I'm super excited about it. Awesome. So, okay, if you can't speak about it, I won't, I won't probe. N none of that. <laughs> Obviously, it's different now, but how have you been to Atlanta before? Do you like the city? What's it like? I, I've never been to Atlanta, but I am uh, absolutely loving it. Uh, they, have, they have a great park here called Piedmont Park. And, you know, uh, we're still, even though Atlanta isn't in a lockdown, I still have to be sure. uh, careful because of, of, of work. I don't want to be the guy that shuts down production, so I'm doing my best not to be that guy. Um, but, but in the, you know, from what the city offers and, and the little that I can do, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited to be here for sure. Yeah, definitely. And well, first of all, huge congrats on Snowpiercer because it's an awesome show. Um, now, I've read that you were slightly mischievous, perhaps, in your first audition, maybe almost tricking the writers and producers. How did that go? Well, it, <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Well, it was, it was more, you know, the, the character was a Polish character named um, Harold Kowalski. And I, I loved, the, I loved the, the, the material that they gave me to audition with. And when it's an Eastern European accent, um, and especially if it's something that I really connect to, I like if it, if it gives room for improv, then I like to do that to, to make the character more mine. And I knew that the other people on the other side of the table don't know the di difference between, they, they don't, they're not uh, Slavic, at least I assumed that they weren't Slavic in it. And so I was using Serbian to improv for a Polish character. And so after a few auditions and when I booked the role, that's when I said, okay, just so you know, I was improv in yeah. Serbian. So if that's a no-no, if we can't change it, I can't do it in, in uh, Czech and, uh, or Polish. And, um, and I said, but, you know, if we could make them Serbian, that would be pretty great. Then I can keep that improv. And mm -hmm. Graham, Graham Mason, who is the showrunner and executive producer of the show, he said, well, I kind of like the unassuming name of when people look at you and just called you Harold. So that there's an unassuming name to the uh, unassuming image to that. And I, immediately my brain popped into my brother. My brother's name's Boyan. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I said, well, what about Boyan? And the slight hesitation, and then I jumped in quickly. I go, but, you know, his nickname's Bucky. He goes, oh, I like that, Bucky. And he had a friend named uh, Boscovich. And and I went, Graham, come on, Breachman, Bucky, Boscovich? That's a great name. He goes, all right, we're done. So why I love this show so much is because the creators are, are amazing to allow me to do that. Sure. and allow me make the character mine and and that it's a tribute to my brother and my heritage and my family it's a, a little bit of everything in there so i'm really connected to the character for sure yeah it, it is an awesome name to be fair it's very catchy it, and <laughs> the reason i like the name as well is because it's so fitting for the character that you've right it seems right. like a, a bucky um <laughs> and it's actually interesting that you say that because your heritage your well you're canadian but your family you know your heritage is scattered all over the place um, so do you ever, have you ever been back to visited, you know, where your family are from and things like that? Yeah, my, my, my mom's Croatian and she's from a town called Pula. And my dad, uh, was born in Belgrade, grew up in a town called Labin. And so I've gone, uh, I think the last time I was there was probably five years ago. And, um, I still, you know, obviously keep in contact with the family there, but it's, uh, it's definitely something that I like to keep close to my heart for sure. 
Nice. Well, I mean, I like that because I, I mean, I'm English, but my family are from all over the place. I've got, right. some, I've got some Moroccan, I've got Russian. I've got, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm a very big mix. Um, you're, you're a mutt. You're a mutt. That's yeah, what, I, in the, yeah, you're a mutt. <laughs> I am. That's exactly it. Um, but um, it was funny because I, when I told my brother, the first thing I, I said to him was I, I was interviewing you um, and he's a big fan of the show as well. First thing he said was stop lying to me because he couldn't believe it. And then after it took him about five minutes to settle down and process the fact that I was interviewing you, he then said, um, just make sure that his arm doesn't get put out of the train as any punishment during the show. <laughs> <laughs> I got to keep my limbs. Yeah. I, I, know, I, I, said, I said as well, like I said, I'm not sure how much influence I have over that, but I can ask. <laughs> right. But also, don't give me any ideas. I, I I could just see them watching this go, oh, shit, we should take Bucky's arm off <laughs> because of this show. <laughs> it's all my brother's fault. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know. You can, hey, don't worry. If, if there's anything, uh, if anything bad happens, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have a word with we'll, him. We'll um, take care of him. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I think as well, what's, um, what I like about your roles is even... Um, even if we go back a few years, even with Van Helsing, I mean, now your character, Julius, you went through quite a big transformation from the start to where you ended up in season five, you know? So obviously starting off as a vampire and then becoming human. What was that transition like for you to kind of, kind of switch up your, your acting and your approach to the character? Well, it's a great question. I, I loved the character, Julius, right off the bat. And, and you know, I play a lot of, conflicted characters and I really I really enjoy playing those those characters and you know the quote-unquote bad guy mm. um I I always look at those roles as as um a, a person that's willing to go that much further than anybody else and so mm. I, I I try to get as much humanity as I can and conflict in there as I can and so I was I was just really excited to do the role when I when I got got the show in first season where yeah. you know Julius was a badass yeah and wow. yeah and then you know I'm, I'm I'm sticking straws in in babies' backs I, honestly I, it's one of the best things I love about it is there are some scenes that that I'll, I'll watch you in and it's like you're taking on the world yeah it's awesome and you yeah. just don't care. You'd fight anyone. It, it's, it's incredibly uh, entertaining. It's almost yeah. like you bring kind of some invincibility to the character. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that, that's the whole thing. Like his struggle is that he, he also can't die. Like he, he, sure. And then he, come, he comes into this, um, into this world to where now there's a, 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 a vampire slayer mm. who with her own DNA can switch a vampire back, which is also scary because then... Once you get switched back from vampire to human, you remember all the terrible things that you've done. And, but when you're the vampire, you realize that that's a weapon that you can control the world with. Sure. So it was really interesting to play that. And then when the, the writers and creators threw the, the wrench in there with making me human, it was something that um, I really enjoyed the idea of just basically playing Alex during this time. Yeah. And, and, and just kind of taking the world in as the person that I am. Mm. So it was, it was something that I really enjoyed. And that transition, really making that transition in a way where, you know, I remember the things that I've done and I have retribution. And if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out finally doing something good. Sure. And so that was my journey as, as a human. And I was just very thrilled that they wrote that for me and, and yeah. very blessed. Well, that's retribution is a great way to put it because your 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 character the transition is affected by the past. Um, and is there? Did you prefer one or the other? Did you prefer being vampire or human, or or, or did they bring just different things to the character? Uh, great question. They definitely brought different things, but it's it, I don't get to play. Uh, I don't get to play roles like human Julius a lot. So that was something that really that really helped me. And obviously I have an amazing cast that helped me along with it and really kind of connecting to the material as opposed, not so much in a character aspect of it because Julius, was, I had to develop a massive character around it. Most of my roles, I develop a character and a backstory. This was more 
um, it, it was just putting my heart on my sleeve and just rolling with that, which is kind of scary for me because I, I rarely do these character roles. Yeah. So it, it was something that, I, that I, I was extremely passionate about and just getting the idea of who I am across and, and unfiltered. Definitely. Um, I think that as well from, well, from, from all of your roles, but I think mainly from Van Helsing, it's really taken on this, uh, the, this shape that your fans have really, really blown up because of it. Um, and I was looking at a few things that some of your, that some of your fans have posted online. So right. there's some big Alex Panovich fan love out there. I saw one, I'm not sure if you've seen this, but so it's a picture of you with, with, with your arms out. I think you're in Van Helsing, your arms are out. And this, this, this lady, she's posted it and she's captioned it. I thought you'd never ask. Yes, I'll have a hug. Promise you'll never <laughs> let me go. <laughs> that's, that's smart. That's a good one. There's big love out there. Um, and also, this is quite apt because I see you've got, a, you've got a guitar in your room as well. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll get it. Don't worry. We'll, we'll get into that heavy metal, <laughs> the heavy metal chat after, but, um, another great, I think my favorite one that I saw was a lady posted a picture of you playing the guitar and she's captioned it. Um, sorry, if you can't get hold of me, I'll just be staring at this for the next five hours. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm so fortunate to have some amazing people that, yeah. that even care about my career and just want to exchange. And, and, uh, I, I love talking to them. I talk to them all the time on Twitter mm -hmm. and on Instagram. And there's a, there's a group, uh, a group of ladies called, uh, the cuddle puddle and, and they, yeah, they actually yeah, they actually connect online and do yeah. Zooms. And, and during this whole pandemic, they, they have these amazing Zoom calls. And, and I just find it absolutely glorious that, you know, just the connection of my work has brought these ladies together and are good friends. And that's just a bonus for me. Yeah, for sure. There is, there is a lot of Alex Panovich love out there. Um, <laughs> and um, so you've got the guitar in your room. You, to be honest as well, I'll, t I'll tell you what. Tell I me. Saw, I saw the outfit. I saw you wearing a nice Springsteen shirt. You know, you got the bracelets on, the guitar in the background. You're looking musical. And I know I'm the one to talk wearing a hat, but- um, Yeah, I almost wore that hat. I, I, I literally had that hat. I almost wore this exact same hat. We would, have, we would have been twinning, totally. Twinning, and I've grown my beard out as well. It's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're, you're you're a few years younger. You're like my, like if I'm looking in the mirror, that's me 20 years ago. So I'm happy what I'm looking at. Uh, I like it. Um, so you're still playing guitar, I can see them, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. You know, for for me playing, it's it's a it's a great release, and and you know I mostly play bass, but having a guitar. Um, you know, and just doodling with it a little bit, but yeah, I need, I needed that here and working on this project just because, you know, it's not home. We're at home. I have all my, all my things there, but, um, yeah, I absolutely love music. I absolutely love every genre of music and I'm, I'm pretty lucky that I had a life in it. Yeah. Well, so the heavy metal, um, so the band that you were playing guitar and bass in, um, were your bandmates, were they buddies from school? Did you just meet up with them and things like that? Auditioned? No, it was literally after, like it was, I was 15 years old. And after school, we would go to our friend's house. Uh, it, it was either Trevor Harper or Tony Brenda. And we would, I we would just kind of jam after school and people would come over to kind of watch and hang out. And then we just started playing a little bit more. Then we played a talent show here and there. And we started learning more songs and the band came together and we, you know, I think it was in um, probably our, we were still in school and during the summer breaks, we would tour Canada. Wow. And once we, yeah, and once we were finished playing, once we were finished school, everyone just said, let's go on the road and, and take a shot at this. And so we played all over Canada for, a, for quite a while and, and they're lifelong friends. Like we were, we just spoke the other day and, you know, we just keep on wanting to get back together and, and just kind of jam some songs when I get back to my hometown of Winnipeg. And that, that to me yeah. is exciting. And having lifelong friends like that, that we've gone through a lot of stuff together is, is always, uh, is always a great thing. That, that is awesome because you, it, it, you know, music in itself bonds people, but then when you're in a band playing with people that, you know, you, you can't write that. It's, um, there's, there's nothing like, honestly, there's nothing like, and I, I love the music that's out today. I think there's some amazing things, but there's well, who, who nothing like, pardon? 
Who do you listen to, like, not currently? I, well, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm loving Billie Eilish. Like, her stuff is fantastic. Yeah. And the new Foo Fighters album came out. Awesome. Um, the Weeknd, I love The Weeknd. There, there's just, the, 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 uh, the sound of music right now, obviously, is so different than it was 20 years ago. But honestly, there's nothing like going to a live show and seeing five guys play five different instruments, making one amazing sound. There's something about the energy going into each instrument that is just, you know, I, I just, I take so much from that. Um, so I miss live shows during this time for yeah, sure. I, I can, I can feel it. And in that description that you just said, well, it's interesting because I heard um, Springsteen once said that when the band get together, there's some kind of magic. He doesn't know what it's, it is, but there's just some kind of magic on stage. It, that's absolutely true. Like, and what's so interesting, no matter what mood you're in, before it all changes when you're on there with five guys four or five guys playing all this the same idea of a song and making this amazing sound together there it it it, it is it's absolutely magic it's absolutely magic totally um so if there was one band in the world that you could front you know be the oh. guitarist or singer or anything who would it be for oh man i've been I've been such a Foo Fighters fan forever. And since day one, I mean, obviously I was a Nirvana fan, but then I, I was like one of the earliest ones to hear Dave Grohl's first album where he played all the instruments and everyone was just like, I can't, this is, this is great. Like I, this is the last thing I would have thought that mm -hmm. Dave Grohl would have put out, but I've been a fan since day one, and I think that the music is melodic and, and yeah. hard, and, and it just uh, it just does a phenomenal job. And you can tell the fun that they have in, in the band. Yeah. And again, it goes from the top down, and uh, Dave Grohl looks like somebody that you just want to have a beer with and jam, so. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I actually remember, I stayed up to watch um, Joe Biden's inauguration celebrations, um, and their Foo Fighters were just super Crazy, right? Incredible. Crazy, um, and as well, like it's no surprise because you know you're in a load of rigorous scenes in your acting, especially Van Helsing and Snowpiercer. There's no surprise that you know when you got the gloves on and step into the ring. I've heard you're you're pretty. Yeah, I've, I've heard you're pretty handy. Yeah, man. I, I have three generations of boxers in my family. So my my grandfather, my uncle, my dad, um, and so I basically knew boxing right out of the womb and I didn't compete till later on in my life um, mm. but when I did it also brought my father and I closer together and it also got him off the couch and training other kids which he still does you know to this day so that to me was the biggest reward but I, I love the science of boxing I love the technique of boxing I don't I'm not big into into just the fighting like like a bar fight there's something yeah. about the will of one person to another person and whose will and who's who can be relaxed enough and push their will enough to to outsmart and out counter that to me that that chess game to me is is sure. remarkable yeah, yeah it's remarkable I, um, well when you were growing up did you have you know one particular influence on many or perhaps even your your father and your grandfather who who are the influences for you the, the boxing influences ha hands down muhammad ali yeah and, and I know, I know so many people say that, but I almost, I, I, I had this, uh, so I did a short film in 2000, 2010, I think. But before that, I was asked to be, um, to help out in an event from a friend, a friend of mine where this is before I was making any money acting. And so I was teaching boxing. And so there was an event coordinator that uh, her name's Rory Richards and, and I was teaching her boxing and every session would talk about, I would always talk about Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali went through this, his convictions, and the whole thing, and training. And then one day she says, hey, so listen, I'm, I'm doing this event. I would love you to work it. I'm like, what, what are you doing? Well, Muhammad Ali's coming in the town because the director of Facing Ali is from Vancouver and they're having, they're having a premiere here and it's a $5,000 plate dinner. I was like, again, I was like, oh my God, I get to, I get to meet my hero. But then I had a moment of, oh man, I've never wanted to meet my hero 
just passing by, like in an airport. I'd rather not even see it. I'd just r- rather keep what I have. And, and then this was a moment for me to sneak into a charity dinner. And I just, that just didn't feel right, even though she was being very kind. Yeah. And so I went back to her and I said, look, you know, thanks for the offer, but this is not how I kind of envisioned it. She goes, oh, no, no, I, I need your help to take care of him. I went, what? I need you to be there to make sure, you know, he's okay. So I got to escort Ali into this amazing event, his wife and his caretaker. I'm sobbing and Rory's going, get your shit together. You're here for a job. Get your shit together. And I'm like, so, and, and, and the best, the best part is when we walked towards the theater, it was just me, Muhammad Ali. I can't even say it, believe I say that. Me, Muhammad Ali, his wife, Lonnie, and Marjorie. And Marjorie and Lonnie said, uh, Muhammad, we're going to get some popcorn and, and you a Diet Coke. We'll be right back. And they walk out. And now I'm alone in this theater with Muhammad Ali. And it was during his Parkinson, so he wasn't really reacting, but his eyes were so alive. Mm. And I, I, I just thought, I, I don't think I'll ever have a chance in my life to have a moment. So I just said, listen, I, I know everyone feels this about you, but you have been such an inspiration, a second father. I go on, I'm weeping, I'm looking at like the champ. Yeah, and then I said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, no, it's seriously, no joke. And, yeah. and I say, um, I, and, I, and, and he lifted, lifted up his fist a little bit after I kind of poured my heart out and just kind of touched my chin. And I pretended to go to sleep. I went, that, that touched Joe Frazier. That just George Foreman. And I'm like, this is amazing. I just got dropped by Ali. And then <laughs> little smile. That was one of the most epic moments and very, very fortunate to even have that moment. Yeah. Um, but he has been an influence. Like He's not only been an influence in boxing for me, but he's just been an influence of, of courage and, and keeping your word. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I'm always thinking about things that I do and, and the things that he sacrificed. He sacrificed three of his best boxing years because his his religion and what what it, what it meant to him, he could have easily just went okay, and and just gone into the army and done exhibition matches to lift morale. He would never see any action, but no, he was like, "This is not my war, and I'm not doing this." And he gave up three of the best years that he would have had. So that is somebody that you just kind of salute, tip your hat to, and just be lucky that he was around when you were alive. You know, for sure, that is. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be listening very envious of you. <laughs> I'm, I'm very lucky. I'm very yeah. lucky. Um, well, I, it, recently, I actually, I rewatched Raging Bull. And for my money, could be the best boxing film of all time. Absolutely. I think... That, I, go, I go with Rocky and Raging Bull, for sure. Yeah? I, I love the story of Rocky just because he was, like, Sylvester Stallone trying to make that movie was Rocky. He had no money. No one believed in him. He got his family involved. He turned down an exorbitant amount of money just to, just to give it away. And he stuck with his guns. And then the way they made that first Rocky is just super inspirational. I think as a whole, to me, the Rocky story is number one. But as a film, Raging Bull is just yeah next, sure. next level. I mean, hey, they're both. I wouldn't mind watching either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh- so you've you've often said in the past that you don't like um, you know relying on friends in the industry for roles and things like that. But I wonder how hard is it when Jason Momoa is on the phone to you to say no? <laughs> All right, well, that's the thing. I when he called me, I didn't say no. Right. I, exactly. I, this is, yeah. You well, can't because he. It was literally. No. It was lit- This was the call after I turned down the role. The call was literally, hello, and Jay with Jay's voice and and the way he talks is like, what the heck, what the fuck's going on, motherfucker? (laughs) You're supposed to do this fucking thing. Come on, why aren't you doing this thing? And I was like, well, this is what what I was thinking of. uh, I thought maybe there could be a bigger role there. No, man, I need you for this. I need you. I was like, then I'm there, man. I'm there. Yeah. And it ended up, it it taught me a very valuable lesson that lesson that no small role is is a small role and. And it became one of the best gigs that I've done, just not only, you know, working with him, but um, earning it on my own without going to him and saying, hey, can you get me in? Um, that's something that I, I don't like to put on, on friends that work in the industry. Um, but knowing that 
you know, if it was ever asked of me, I would do my best to try to get my friends in as my friends would. But there's something about getting it on your own merit. Yes. And, um, and to be able to work with him and, and Francis Lawrence, and I think the show is phenomenal. So I'm, uh, I, I'm excited to be a part of the show. And, I'm, and really, it was a learning lesson for me that it went down that way and just shows that no small role is a small role. Definitely. And um, it, that, that is interesting. It's that sense of almost that you've made everything from your own effort and your own skill and hard work. And I, um, I, you know, I, I totally understand that. Um, but you've also recently shot a film where you were kind of alone for all of it, right? It was 92 and you were essentially be because of course the times we're in now you are essentially having to record everything by yourself everyone you know on zoom how we're doing this or facetime or whatever. how hard is that to be in a film and you know you can't play off you know actors who are next to you off their facial expressions i think how, how hard is that to be in well it was it right for us the lockdown happened uh march of last year and a friend of mine, uh, Rick Dugdale, who I did a film with Claude Blackway, who was who Anthony Hopkins was in, um, and 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 Rick Dugdale and I, I became good friends. And he was going to shoot some films, but then the pandemic happened, so his whole team were just kind of like, "Well, what are we going to do?" Well, we still want to stay creative, so they knocked off uh, a script in like two weeks. Cameron knocked off a script in like two weeks, and um, and basically what we were saying is that this film was made without a handshake that no one, no one was around mm -hmm. and to, to be able to come up with the creative, get the ideas. So we would use the laptop as the zoom. And then I would put the, the iPhone right behind it. So it looks like the webcam because it's 1080p. So we would use that. Um, we had a couple GoPros to pretend they were security cameras. And I called in a favor where a friend of mine got his drone up. And again, I don't have to see him. I'm just talking to him on the phone while he's on the ground and I'm on the 30th floor. And so we, we did it that way, but acting opposite, um, basically just a reader. And then after a take, I w everyone, else, everyone would come back on. And so the set designer would go, hey, can you move the light in the back just a little bit to the center? <laughs> oh, can I see another shirt on you? Wardrobe, can I see another shirt? Like it was, it was literally just like jamming on, on the creative and then blasting through this, this thing. And thank God we have a, a, a great team and that everyone felt comfortable with, but it was absolutely weird to do. It yeah. was something where you had to use your imagination and be as creative as possible. Totally. Um, and Rick and the team kind of led it in such a great, easy way that it, it, it was something that I'm really proud of, which is it's gonna be coming out in the next few months, which we're really excited about. Um, and there's some surprises in there I can't wait to share. But it was, it was something that I wasn't used to and, and got to be creative in this amazing environment and just take some risks. And it was, it, I'm so happy I did it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it just sounds almost totally surreal. Um, I wonder as well, because you're kind of in this room by yourself, in a way, is it a good thing that you can bring anything that you want to the character? Uh, it's totally yours and it, you can make it whatever you want it to be. Is that a positive, perhaps, of that situation? In, 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 absolutely. In that situation, you, you get licensing to be as creative as possible, staying within the brackets of the, of the idea that you want to do. Um, like, I incorporated my bass in there. I was like, I got I to gotta use my bass somehow. And just kind of jamming on ideas. And, and what's great is that whole team were like, oh, why don't we try something else? And then we would try something else and... We, everyone would be happy about it. So it wasn't just, uh, yeah, whatever you want. It was us creating, you know, the environment. It was definitely weird, man. It was yeah. definitely weird to shoot like that. But um, I'm glad I did it. And so far, from what I've seen, uh, I'm really excited for people to see it. Yeah, for sure. No, and, and it sounds as well like one of these experiences that everyone wants to see how it fits together as well. Um, right. So it's, uh, it's come together. Um, and now you've also recently been working on a, a rather large project back in your hometown, um, Wonderlight Studios. So you're opening a studio. Um, what was the drive behind it? Did you do it for a specific reason or you just wanted to give back to the hometown? Was anything that drove you to do it? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, we've changed the name because of uh, some copyright infringements that we didn't know about. So it, it, it's not called Wonderlight anymore, but we are still obviously moving forward. And the pandemic has kind of slowed it down a bit. But for me, you know, Winnipeg, my hometown, has arguably the best tax credit in North America at 65%, max of 65%. And they have amazingly talented actors. It's an, it's an amazing creative uh, theatrical community there. Um, and I started my career there. It's, it's a small community, which only has one studio. And I just, you know, me and a team from Los Angeles, uh, Bill Sarin and Eric Mark, who are phenomenal partners, are trying to make it so we can build it another studio, which means we get more jobs for Winnipeggers. We ha get more creative uh, concepts coming out of Winnipeg. And I just feel like I have this dream. I have this dream of just cutting the tape with my team of a new studio yeah. like that, that, and it's, and it's emotional for me too, just because it's my hometown. It got me started. And, and if I can help at all, and, and I find I, even saying that if, if, if I can help them at all, I feel like it helps me more than ever, more, more than it would help Winnipeg just because I, I have so much pride for that city and what it's done for me and uh and my family so i'm uh we're excited to see where this journey is going to take us but we're rolling we're going for sure it honestly it sounds like a really cool uh project and something that it it almost the way you're describing it doesn't even feel like work it feels just like something that you just are solely driven to do uh which definitely um, and it's great what's great about it is that there's so many people that i know once once everything starts rolling uh, uh, so many good friends and people that I know within the industry that everyone can benefit. Everyone can work together in this. And that's all you ever want. You just want to work with good people. You want to work with people that are compassionate, understand um, the idea of the business and respect each other. And I'm lucky that the team that we have is there and I can't wait to pull more people in with that kind of mindset. Totally. No, honestly, it sounds like a really awesome thing to do, but quickly before we, we have to ask you before we, uh, before we what, you're, we're done. We're done. Well, no, not yet. Not yet. Don't, don't keep those tears in. Keep the, keep them in. We're not, we're not done yet. Don't I know. Okay. I, I'm not going to get on the wrong side of you. Okay. <laughs> I know. I know. We're the same. Time, I, but I'm, I'm backing off. <laughs> are you six? Are you six, five? I'm six, five. Dude, you're 20. You're me 20 years ago. Yeah. Sorry well, that this is what you're going to look like 20 years say, <laughs> what anyone's ever given me. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I'll have some pages where people are making memes with me and capturing right. right. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm that like, I'm that old filter that you get on one of those yeah, social media some apps. Age filter. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, if, if if I'm you, if, if if I'm a younger you, I need some advice. Give me, give, give me some life advice, Alex. Come on now, Guide me Shit, that's a great question. So if I could talk to myself twenty years, yeah. uh, twenty years uh, uh, in the past, yeah. what would I give? So it's great because I'm looking, I'm looking at the dude right now. So I'm, <laughs> I, 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 I would say is just try everything and just go for it. Let, let fear guide you as opposed to pull you back. And I've had that, like I've basically had three different careers. I played, I played music for a good chunk of my life and then I boxed for a good chunk of my life. And now I'm, I'm, I'm doing this for a, a massive chunk of my life. And those are the moments that scared me the most, but also gave me the most rewards. You know, and there's a lot of things that I wish I would have done a little earlier but, you know, you, you, you take your journey, but just trust in the fact that, yes, saying yes is, is a gold mine. You're going to learn so much. You can figure it out afterwards um, if it's not something that you want to do. But don't let fear make you say no. So there you go. Pearls. <laughs> I love it. I'll never let that go. Alex Panovich, you are a real gent. Thank you so much for coming on and speaking to us. We are so excited to see what the future holds and seeing more of you and we cannot wait to see everything get released and thank you honestly and take care of yourself and uh honestly thank you so much for coming on and speaking to us really appreciate it thanks for having me on brother this was a this was a joy thank you